This is the Dell Optiplex 3060 from the last video, which was part of our eBay games series. I got a really good deal on this, primarily because the case was smashed up. In fact, it looked a little bit like every case that has ever crossed me. But it did come that way. My hands are clean. Since this was the small form factor model, and also mainly because it's beat up, I plan on pulling this out of the case and doing some upgrades to turn this into what I hope will be a pretty solid retro emulation machine. And then I'm going to nail it to the wall behind me. Okay, not that extreme, but possibly almost as crude. After the upgrades, I'm going to do just a basic wall-mounted computer, but we'll have to see how that goes. I'm going to start off with some upgrades. I plan on swapping out the existing CPU fan with a standalone one that doesn't mount directly to the case, and using a new power supply with it as well. One of these small, somewhat questionable flex power supplies we messed with in a previous video. At 400 watts, I'm not completely sure it'll have enough power, but I'm hoping. Especially because its small size makes it much more shoddy wall mount friendly. Anyway, we're going to have to pull everything from the case before we do the testing. And that testing setup is going to be a little complicated and take some space, and that means it won't exactly work for chair desk. But seriously, who even cares about chair desk anyway? <laughs> That, of course, was a dramatic recreation. Obviously, I would never blaspheme the chair desk, but one must understand the consequences. All right, so here we are. I'm going to do some quick, basic upgrades. I'm going to start by pulling everything out of the case and setting it up in this even more crude than our potentially crude wall mount probably will be area situation that's going on here. All right, so the disassembly was simple enough. I just took out the screws, pulled out the motherboard, unhooked everything, put it on these crummy little stands that I made. They're essentially just like bolts. And now we're going to start doing the upgrades. Starting with the CPU fan. It looked like this stock fan just mounted to standoffs that were directly attached to the case. I could start chopping stuff up, but it's easier just to take this basic cooler that was only like $15 and get it set up. Plus it's a little more visually appealing anyway. Next I'm removing the lower speed single stick of RAM that this came with and adding four 8 gigabyte sticks of DDR4 2666 megahertz. The highest speed that this CPU, the i5 8600, is capable of running. The amount is probably overkill but I already had it, and I can always pull a couple of sticks if I need them for something else. And after that, in the hopes of being able to run more demanding systems, I'm going to add a GPU. Now, from what I've read, emulation differs from standard PC gaming, as it relies more on the CPU than GPU. But it still does seem to be important, so we'll see what this can do. The graphics card I'm adding is the RX 5 70, mainly because they're decent, pretty cheap, and also because it's the most decorative GPU I have right now. And it will be hanging on a wall. Hanging on a wall like a majestic painting. A majestic painting of a majestic chair desk. Which is the most majestic of all objects. Wait, uh, wait, where was I? All right, the GPU. I'm putting it directly into the PCIe slot now, but when we mount it, I plan on using a riser cable so it lies kind of flat against the wall. It would have needed some kind of support anyway just because of its weight, so I figure I'll try to mount it in some kind of way where it's visible and it looks nice. Then I'm adding the SSD. This PC has an M2 slot on the motherboard, 
cord that will allow us to use a faster drive. And basically what I did is start off by using an enclosure to flash Bodicera to the M2 SSD. Bodicera being a Linux distribution centered around emulation. And then I just added the files and all that kind of stuff that I need. And after that, we can just drop the M2 drive right into the slot. Finally, to tie it all together, our highly questionable little flex power supply, which I have to say has worked out pretty well in the past, despite its absolute lack lack of any kind of safety rating whatsoever. But much like warranties, which are best served, voided, we're just going to kind of go for it. All right, I think we're ready to roll, so let's make sure it works, test some emulation, and then we'll move on to just stapling the whole thing to the wall. Okay, not quite, but something along those lines. Success! So far, still a lot of room for things to go awry, but it's at least booting up and ready for testing. Now, when we're starting off, we're going to skip the most basic systems because we've already proven empirically, umpirically, and even vampirically that you can run NES on a literal piece of toast. Judging by previous builds I've messed with, I don't think we'll have any issue with PS2 or GameCube either, but that seems like a good place to start. What about PS1? Shut up, Cloud. Just as expected, I tested a few titles out on the Cube of Games, and it was perfectly smooth. Same thing with PlayStation 2. I didn't expect those to be an issue, really. Really, those systems would be fine on this computer, even without a GPU, most likely. I've used, like, 6th gen i3 processors to run those systems, and it's usually perfectly fine. Adding the GPU was more about pushing it into the next gen of consoles to see if we can step it up a bit, so we'll dive into some PlayStation 3. All right, jumping into what will be the upper end of this system, PlayStation 3 emulation. First game, Call of Juarez, The Cartel, and as usual, I'm just filming the screen directly. The color does look really sharp and the resolution is good, but just as seen by the camera, it probably looks a little funky being filmed that way, but it does look nice in person. The game is definitely playable and doing pretty well overall. There are some really minor stutters here and there, but those are rare and hardly noticeable. Moving on to another game, this Tom Clancy Rainbow Six game. And I feel like the RX 580 might have been right in the sweet spot for PS3 emulation. Though the power draw is higher, so it, it most likely wouldn't have panned out with our Flex PSU. But if I would have bought specifically for this computer instead of just using a GPU I had around already, that's probably what I would have gone for as it's just just a few more bucks than this. And don't get me wrong, the 570 is doing really well, but it feels like it's just short uh, of being perfect. Though I can't say that for sure without having tried the 580. And like I said, I, I don't want to be down on this one. It, it actually is doing really well. So it does seem like PS3 is going to be playable on this system. Though PS3 emulation is still largely being hammered out. So it depends a lot on the game, the settings, and other compatibility concerns. But overall, really really decent so far. All right, now for wall mountain, wall mounting. Again, this won't be anything fancy, but what else would you expect from me? So I'm basically just going to run a couple of trim pieces along the wall back here. It's pretty simple and won't look amazing, but I just cut them down a little over 16 inches to mount to the studs because I don't feel like messing with drywall anchors. Then I spray painted them. The bottom piece of trim is a little wider because I'm going to mount 
two small supports, hopefully to hold the GPU. Those will either be to put in a couple of supports just to hold up the card mounted directly into the slot, or for aesthetics, if it works out, I'm going to use a riser cable and have the front of the GPU facing out. And the brackets will essentially just hold the whole thing up. You'll get a better idea of what that's about as we get to it. I'm screwing the trim pieces directly into the studs, and then in turn, I'll be able to mount whatever I need to the trim boards with plenty of support. The motherboards just held up by a few screws, just ran in a little bit so that it doesn't directly sit against the wood. And as far as the power supply, I'm just going to do whatever I can. Extra pieces of wood, braces, I didn't have much of a plan going into this. There will be some extra space on the side, but I plan on putting more things on this wall. I might eventually upgrade the power supply and GPU, which will take more room, and I might also throw up a KVM switch eventually. Just generally speaking, there's eventually going to be a lot of stuff on this wall back here, so I'm not terribly concerned about appearance. Alright, and we have everything up. Like I mentioned, I'm going to be messing with this more over time. I, I'm going to be putting other stuff up, and I also need to figure out what I'm going to do with the wires. I'd like for them to be generally more tidy, less visible, that kind of thing. But for now, I think I have it about where I want. Looking back, there's probably a few things I would have done differently, like using a flat paint instead of high gloss, because it, it looks weird in this light, even though in person it doesn't look bad. And I actually do kind of like the way it looks close up for something basic, you know, what it is. Anyway, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to catch you on the next one.